Hi, I'm Synthad, and on my channel, I make tutorial videos about modular synthesizers and how to make music with them. And today, I'm very excited because I think I've put together my best, smallest techno modular case ever. So if you like making a bit of techno, and if you want to find out how to do that using modular, but don't want a big system, this might be the one for you. So in this video, we're going to explore some of the ways that you can combine these modules to make a really cool techno no groove box. So this is a groove box with effectively eight voices, two filters, and an effects module, and then a sequencer, and then multiple modulation lanes. We have the DivKid mutes here from Bafaco. This allows you to instantaneously play, mute, or enable different uh, signal paths, and so you can use this to very quickly bring in and out different parts of the track. Here I've got two DNI Pro dots. Now these are really powerful for small systems. You get three tracks of 16 steps. You can turn the knob here and dial in different Euclidean patterns. And I'm going to use these to drive both the drum rhythm here, but also sequence some modulation. Where are we going to get the, the melody from? So I'm going to use two of the channels here for two different sounds. I'll use the other two channels from this to modulate different parts of the patch. And finally, let's talk effects. So I've got two filter modules here. One of them is the MS-22 from 3Tom Modular. Highly recommend this filter. If you're into building small but powerful systems, you really can't do better than this one. The other filter that I've got here is the Viol Runia from Noise Engineering. And now let's get started with some patching. Now I have my audio path set up here. I've got the uh, channel seven and eight going into the MS-22 and I got the mix out here going into the Wild Runa. Now on channel seven and eight, I've got uh, two pitch samples. We've also got a clock, so now if I clock here, you can see the little lines running down. We're gonna punch in just real quick. Let's make sure it all works. To actually bring the kick in and out, it's much more effective to patch these things into the div kid mutes. But I want to use my kick to generate one more triggers. But now here I'm getting additional trigger values being generated by this module every time the kick and the hat land on one or the other but not the same step. So we get an interesting rhythm. So as these change, this will also change. Logic is very good for generating additional triggers. So if you're in a small setup and you need more triggers for interesting stuff to happen, use a logic module. Let's add another rhythmic element, the classic clap on channel three. And I'll just patch that in here onto this channel here on the dot. So there we go. But let's get some control. We need to have a little bit more manual control of this. The first thing I wanna do is I want to add volume control on that clap. Very easy to do here on our squid sample. We just pop over to the envelope and see where the level is. I'm just gonna assign that to CV input one by pressing that button there, CV one lights up, and I'm gonna patch it into my first attenuverter output here. I have control over the volume of that clap so I can bring it in and I can drop it back out. Let's patch in output one from our Mimetic Digitalis here into input, um, whoops. Input sevens, volt per octave. And I'm gonna patch output four of Mimetic Digitalis into the pitch information for channel eight. But where are we going to get the triggers from? So let's take a trigger here of sequencer one into number seven. And now let's see what happens when we hit play. <laughs> I think what we really want to do is send these triggers through this uh, mute as well, because after all, if I'm going to be able to control the kick and the hat, I'm probably going to want to control when I bring in and bring out these other melodic elements. <laughs> This hi-hat here is just a bit too much. It's a bit too harsh. I want to actually filter a little bit of the high end off that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go in here to the filter and I'm gonna set that to be a low pass filter. And I'm gonna press the button again. You see now what I'm gonna do is CV map the filter frequency to CV2. And I'm gonna patch CV2 into B, if you will, 
of the quadrat. So now when I turn this knob here, the filter cutoff is adjusted. And what we can do now is a little bit of rhythmic modulation. And for this, we're going to use the remaining two channels, channel two and three of the Mimetic Digitalis. So let's patch output two here into the ACV input on the MS-22. Now the ACV is an additional CV input. There's the FCV input, which allows you to modulate the cutoff frequency. I like to do that one by hand. But the ACV one here, I've mapped into a couple of different parameters. And I'm going to use my last sequencing lane for that here off the DNI Pro. I'm going to patch it into the X input, so we'll loop around. I've separated out the pitch information from triggering the sample and from clocking the sequencer. So we are actually going to get a lot of variation now possible by simply disconnecting all of those pieces which you normally would have in a sequencer. You'd put the trigger, you'd put the pitch, and it would all be in the same place. This is a lot easier to play around with. Oh, wow, I can just have so much fun playing this thing, as you can tell from the uh, head bobbing that's been going on there. I think you could have a lot of fun with this. You could load up different sounding samples here, glitch them away, reverse them, and just go crazy. Anyway, I've had a ton of fun showing this to you. I really hope this gave you some great ideas. Please do leave me some comments, leave me some thoughts down below in the uh, comment section. Let me know what you'd like to see me cover in future videos, and uh, keep on jamming.